Hello everyone! This tutorial is based on the techniques that you can see in the Easy Ornament tutorial. If you haven't seen this one, check the description below for the link to that video. I sped up the video to make it shorter. Um, I'm making two pieces at the same time and otherwise the video would have been over 30 minutes long. In the part you can see right now, I am drawing the outlines of the ornaments. This time I am not using um, a tool to make the circles, I'm just drawing them freehand. And for the first one, I am going straight up with the quartz, again to make it easy, and erasing the parts that I don't need. Next I am adding in the highlights. I wanted the highlights to come from the left upper corner but then I decided that the right upper corner would be best so I could create an eye shading on the two overlapping ornaments. This time I did use masking fluid because these are small uh, pieces, they're just 12 and a half centimeters by 12 and a half. If you don't have masking fluid, just be careful to keep it white like I did in the first tutorial. If you happen to make a mistake and color in the entire ornament, you can still go over it with white acrylic paint or white gouache and add in the highlight where they should have been afterwards. For the second one I wanted something different, so I am creating three ornaments that are kind of tied together uh, at the top. This was tricky for me because I didn't have a reference picture. I have a basic knowledge of what I want things to look like. Um, this is based on pictures that I googled before I came to class and just uh, trying to memorize what ornaments look like that are tied together. Um, so I try to portray that as best as possible. I was really struggling with the quartz because to make an image like this look pretty the knot where the quartz are tied together should be outside of the picture um, but I made the mistake first to just end them all together right at the top of the painting. Here I put an arrow in the corner to uh, let myself know where the light is coming from. And also for this one I am using masking fluid just because it makes my life easier.
So now we're starting painting. Again, I am going in with the water first and adding water to the ornaments. For the first one I chose dark pink shades for the ornaments and a lighter pink for the background. I added in the light colored ornament first so I could now add the last dark colored ornament. As you can see I am going to create shading with the same purple on the lighter colored ornament. Because that ornament is still wet it will create a nice gradient between the purple and the pink. For the background I went in with a little bit of water and then I decided I didn't like the light color so I added in a little bit of orange. As I did in the first tutorial I am just touching the sides of the ornaments lightly to make their color flow out into the background. I didn't like the color of the right ornament, it was too pale for me, um, so I wanted to add a little more color to it. Here I made a mistake of adding too much water, you can see that it creates kind of a cauliflower um, and pushes the color away. You can fix this by going over the entire ornament again and adding more color. This will create an even layer of color and remove my mistake. For the second one I am going for blue. Um, you can see me add the first layer. This could be the plain water layer but since I had masked it off it's not a problem. I am absolutely sure that the white areas will remain white. You can see that I added too much water so I just pick it up with a paper towel and all is forgotten. For this piece I wanted to use my favorite color Windsor Blue with a green shade. I am using the Windsor & Newton Professional Watercolors. If you want to use Cotman watercolors, you can use the Intense or Thalo Blue for this. I am mixing my favorite color with Indigo Blue to make different shades. Here I am dabbing in a little more color to create the shading. For the background you can see I went in with a lighter shade of blue. This is just the same mixture of uh, colors that I had on my palette just diluted with a lot of water. 
and here you can see I'm touching the ornaments so everything fades. Eventually I decided I didn't like the white background so I went in with a mixture of indigo blue and Windsor blue. The area that I darken is based upon the arrow that I drew in the beginning to um, point out where the light is coming from. So in this case the light is coming from the left upper corner so I'm making sure that the right lower corner is the darkest. Here you can see I am repeating the step that I did with the purple ornament before. Um, I thought that the color of this ornament was a little too light so I put on an extra layer of dark blue and added a little extra shading to match the background. Next I am adding in the tips and the cords. Here I am doing the exact same thing that I did in the first tutorial. I put on the color, then dilute one side with water and dab off the excess to create a nice gradient. Here I was struggling with the cords again, so I decided to just go with my technique that I had used on the first ones, um, but I didn't like how it turned out, so I, here I'm just fooling around with water and color, and there isn't really any logic to this, so it's kind of hard for me to explain. I just am trying to create something that matches the rest. So feel free to just try out, fool around and see what works for you. The last part is of course removing the masking fluid. Make sure you do this after the painting has fully dried. So here I am removing the sides and this here right there you can see that um, the paint was still wet underneath and it's kind of the first time that happened to me because I hardly ever tape off my paintings. Um, so here I am trying to dab and absorb the extra uh, paint that was underneath with a paper towel. And I am now being very careful um, to do it everywhere because otherwise you will create a line on the white borders. 
I'm really happy that I made that mistake because now I know I will never make it in again in the future and now I was able to show you guys that I am not perfect and I hope that you will um, keep this little mistake in mind when you're doing the exact same thing so just make sure that your paint underneath the tape is dry as well So yeah, here I am being very, very careful, checking first to see if everything is alright. Um, but of course, yeah, the damage was done a little on the upper corner. I also want to point out that you need to make sure that the tape is actually sticking to the paper, um, because sometimes um, if it's not, then the, pa the paint will like slide underneath and then your white border is just ruined. After this my camera died so I want to thank you all for watching and until next time.